Welcome to the Cool Health Podcast, where we unlock groundbreaking research in health and wellness by bringing you the latest in health news and in-depth interviews with experts in their fields. We're here to make health cool again. Thirties, pretty healthy. What I see in there, a lot of times it's, hey, let's get you on some oral probiotics, which are different from gut probiotics. Even though we're in the same tube, there's certain bacteria that flourish in the mouth and will do well to take over the bad bacteria that's trying to grow. So if we can try it out the negative ones with the good ones, that's great. And if we can do that, I mean, that's the most cost-effective way we can start changing the, the oral microbiome. Okay. Oh, it's time to thank the amazing sponsor of this podcast, Ali Tour Naturals. My go-to destination for high-quality skincare products made with the finest ingredients. At Ali Tura, they use the most pure, nutrient-rich ingredients at the core of every product. From things like wild-crafted sea buckthorn and organic aloe vera to grass-fed colostrum and organic cacao butter, each of the ingredients is thoughtfully selected and it has these incredible healing and nourishing properties. Why do I choose them over other skincare? I mean, just from their all natural ingredients, guys. Ali Toro takes pride in using only ethically sourced natural and organic materials to create their powerful formulas, ensuring your skin gets the best possible care without harsh chemicals. It's scientifically proven and effective. Each ingredient in their products is backed by thorough scientific research to maximize effectiveness in supporting skin health and anti-aging. And finally, it was created by an expert, Andy Nilo, a former model and actor, founded Ali Tura after a life-changing accident, and this led him to develop his own transformative skincare solutions. So, guys, join the thousands of satisfied customers who have discovered the stunning results of Ali Tura's exceptional skincare line. Use my code JEK20, all caps, J E K. Two zero, get yourself a discount. This stuff is truly amazing, guys. Thank you. Hostage tape. We're here to discover the revolutionary way to improve your sleep and overall health. Mouth taping is a natural and effective method for promoting nasal breathing during sleep, which unlocks a world of incredible benefits, including enhanced sleep quality, reduced snoring, improved mental focus, and boosted overall health. Also, It's a safe and comfortable design, especially designed to be hypoallergenic, gentle on the skin, and easy to remove. It allows you to get in deep sleep states. And I'm telling you, when I put on my aura ring and check my scores, they're always so much better when I use hostage tape. For the discount code, guys, it's going to be John67447 for 10% off. Once again, John67447 for 10% off. If you really want to enhance your sleep, get amazing deep sleep, and feeling incredibly refreshed. Okay, so what's up with teeth? What's, what's, why do we have them in the first place? What are, what's the, you know, the use of teeth? Purpose? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, they came with us. They came with the package. Mm-hmm. So we use them for, I mean, I feel like teeth in our mouths are how we interact with so both from a what we take in, right, the food that we ingest, some breathing, for better or worse, that comes from our teeth. Our digestion starts in our mouth. The taste factor starts from our mouth. How we speak or can't speak, that's affected by our teeth and our tongue and our right. cheeks and soft tissues. Um, and what we put out there, our smile, yeah. how we share emotion, that's all teeth as well. I see. Um, so, I mean, I, the meanings or the reason behind our teeth is pretty endless. I feel like it's mm-hmm. just that's the portal yeah. to the rest of our bodies. Okay, interesting. And um, in what ways does, you know, we have these teeth. They're amazing. And how does oral care play into all of this? So oral care, I think, is a lot more than brushing and flossing, first off. I think how we care for our mouths begins with what we do with our mouths. So just like 
we talked about in your last podcast, right? The food that we eat, yeah. what we consume, how we consume it, that's where oral care begins. We care for our teeth by caring for our bodies. Okay. Um, how we clean our teeth matters because we are removing biofilm, we're remo removing bacteria and the things that we eat that get stuck in between our teeth. And if they're allowed to sit there, yeah. then we can grow other microorganisms that can consume those things, mm -hmm. break down and eventually cause destruction of the teeth or the supporting structure. Wow. Or that's kind of the traditional way of thinking about it. Right. Um, there's a lot of research to show that just brushing and flossing doesn't actually really move the needle all that much. And that's why you'll see people who really don't even know what end of a toothbrush to use, let alone where it is. And they've never been to the dentist. They finally come in after, you know, 10, 20 years and they're fine. Doesn't look pretty, yeah. but they're fine. They don't have uh -huh. disease. But then there's other people who they brush, they floss, they water pick. They, I mean, they do everything they possibly can. And they're the people who come in and they're like, okay, just tell me where the cavities are, okay. right? Mm -hmm. My gums are bleeding. So oral care for them is a little bit different. Yeah. Because they have different things going on, different, different susceptibilities, different, the why behind what's happening is right. different. And so I think it's kind of like, you know, you have a car, you got a brand new car, how you care for that car is going to be very different from perhaps an older car that is on its way out and you just don't, it's not a priority for you anymore. Yeah. And different people will care for their cars differently, just like you'll care for your mouths differently some of those more expensive cars are going to require special oils, special mechanics, mm -hmm. special microchips, whatever, yeah. where, you know, that, that other car that maybe didn't cost so much may not Chevy. require, right. It's just a good old faithful. You don't have to do all the things, yeah. but you don't always get to pick the car that you get. Right. You do get to choose how you care for it. And sometimes how you care for it works and sometimes not. If the car lives on the East Coast, and there's a lot of salt and sand and all that stuff impact in the car. What's going to change what you do to it? And wow. how does that change the longevity of the car? Let's see, so this is very different from what you get from a regular dentist, right? A little bit. You don't usually hear this. How did you get all into all this, doctor? And who are you, really? Who am I? I know. Big question. Yeah, um, too big. So I've always been more whole person. I mean, even getting into dentistry, I wanted to be a dentist since I was probably eighth grade. Eighth grade. Um, did a career, one of those like career survey things that mm -hmm. we do in health class. I grew up in Canada yeah. and it came out with like number one dentist and kind of went down from that list. And I kind of glommed onto that. I had a neighbor who was a dentist. I babysat for, loved the lifestyle, knew nothing about dentistry outside of, you know, I go get my teeth cleaned. Yeah. About it. But um, I wanted a career where I got to work with my hands. I got to create things, but also wanted the hard science and the health behind it. My mom's a, an occupational therapist, so I've always been aware of healthcare. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't want to do the thing where I just see patients, write a script, and send them on their way. I didn't just want sick care. Um, and so dentistry really seemed to afford that opportunity to be able to develop relationships and talk with patients and do all those things. Fast forward to, um, you know, dental school sucks. <laughs> yeah. You don't see anything. And we, we, I went to school here in Dallas. Okay. Um, and the first two years, we're in the basement of the school. There's no light except for an atrium in the middle. And it's like, literally, like, there's no light until you get to start seeing patients. And we start seeing patients in a second, maybe beginning of third year. And then we start to actually get to put the science with the care part of it, which is where it starts to so become a reality. Okay. So you start in a basement and you're just, what are you just We're learning basic the... science? Okay. Med school, dental school, first two years are very similar. We're learning anatomy, physiology, microbiology, biochem, all the things. Then we add in, well, dental anatomy and some of the oral stuff as well. Um, and then once they feel like, okay, we're, we're all right. Yeah. Guess what? We can go clean teeth. Okay, cool. Um, start making dentures, things that maybe have a little less consequence in terms of irreversible damage. Right. And then we move on from there. Um, and so that's where the patient care part started. Get out of dental school, the economy tanks. So that was 2007. Oh, okay. So 2008, that whole era. And the, um, I mean, you just get a job where you get a job, right? So I worked for Monarch for six months. I moved up to Virginia because my husband got a job in D.C. It was awful. 
<laughs> monarch. What's monarch. That? So it's a like right now dental. It's a big dock in a box. Not to say that it's all terrible. Right. It's a corporate entity. A lot of places won't hire you till you have experience. So you go in there. I had like forty patients on my schedule. The doctor I was replacing had been doing like root canals on anything that had canals that you could do root canals on. Um, sterilization was a mass. Yeah. Paper charts, which early 2000s, that's normal. Right. It was terrible. Paper chart, what's that? So, so the charts where we document all of our notes were okay. paper as oh, opposed okay. to electronic health records. I see, I see. Yeah. So you're sitting there writing notes. So like my first day, I was there for like three hours writing notes. Okay. Of course, I'm looking back and there's like no notes. But the idea with that practice was volume over quality. Though they say quality in patient care, but like what can you do for a patient in 20 minutes or 30 minutes? Not a lot. And that was kind of moving through my career. I mean, I did that. I worked from there. I went and moved to the West Coast and worked for a super boutique private practice. It was like the dream. It was the coffee shop with the, because they had like lattes and espresso machine. We served warm chocolate chip cookies, like mm. all the things, right? We need, to, we need to feed our patients, okay. right? So that they can come back to see us to and take care of things. And then drill them, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> But it was where I began on the West Coast. I was exposed to something called the Coy Center. And John Coyce is one of the big um, thought leaders in dentistry and well ahead of his time. He's now trending with the younger dentists. Okay. But before I was the youngest person in that classroom. And it's a continuum of coursework that is focused on evidence-based, um, risk-based dentistry. So now you're looking at not tooth, but the whole passenger where you're looking at the person. Okay. And so that, it's like, oh, light bulb, look. We get to look at this not in isolation anymore. We actually get to see what's going on in the mouth and consider individual risk. So ask the right questions. You're going to get the right answers. If you don't ask the right questions, you never know what you don't know. And that's where really all of this, I think, started for me is like you've got to know your patient. You have to ask the questions. That takes time. And that has always been like a thing in my career is like, you need to be faster. Whenever I'm working for someone else, they're like, stop talking, do the things I'm like, cool. We will get there. Right. But we still make money while we're talking because ultimately we've got to build trust. We've got to understand the situation. We need to know not just what we see, but why do we see it? Mm -hmm. How did we get here? Because if we don't know how we got here, how do we, how do we keep this from happening again? Yeah. So, um, that's kind of the more whole person, holistic perspective. Yeah. The frontier biological aspects yeah. came through various channels of just seeing all the issues women have in dentistry with pregnancy, conceiving, children, different weird things that, you know, you see when you start talking to a lot of people, you're like, wait, why does everyone have a problem? Or a lot of people have issues with these children who have various either defects or issues, special needs. Where's that coming from? And why do we have all this brain fog? And why do we have all these issues? Well, what are we doing to ourselves in our profession? Like half of us are deaf because we don't protect our ears. They never ta taught us to protect our ears, but we've got this. Oh, when you're a dentist. Inner, when we're in a dentist. Yeah. And why, why do we have brain fog? Why do we have these challenges? Like what kind of things are we doing that we're not protecting ourselves? I mean, that's where you start looking at metals, right? Yeah. And mercury and i mean when we were in school like we'd sit there and like cut out an amalgam on a tooth so we could do a root canal access procedure on an extracted tooth like well it's not in a patient's mouth anymore do we need a mask on mm. uh, maybe <laughs> yeah but you do dumb things because a we're invincible or we think we are and b we just don't necessarily perceive what the risk is associated with this constant exposure so for me all of this really came from where did we begin and how are we like what are we doing to ourselves from a provider perspective? And then let's look at these patients. Let's look at these patients who somehow I always attracted the people who are extra TLC, right? They have that one issue. They have that one thing that's weird. They want to know those extra things about like, what materials are you using on me? What are you doing? The things that like traditionally they get the eye rolls because they're like, well, you're just, obviously you're just crazy. Like why? Trying to make why? me spend more. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you? why would you have a problem after I did this thing on you? Like that's obviously it's not me. It's you. Mm. When, if you start digging into it, it's like, well, no, you might be sensitive to something. Well, we just like cut all this metal out of your mouth. We didn't use any protection for you or me short of a mask on my side. Why might you be sick? 
well, this tooth that's always been bothering you that's had a root canal, it's fine. Well, we can only see things in two dimension. How do we know that it's fine? Right. So lots of those things really led me to the, hold on, there's more here than meets the eye. You know, if we want to talk whole person, whole body, what else is there? What's between the ears? What is that stress and the inflammation? And how does that all fit together in terms of producing what we see in the mouth? If the mouth is attached to the rest of the body, well, we're going to see it. Wow. This is incredibly holistic. And it's eye-opening because what you initially started with was in a basement checking on mouths and then you moved up Mm -hmm. the ranks and you saw just quantity and getting it done and who cares what's going on as long as we get the procedure done. And now you're saying, well, there's a lot more to this, right? It's a ton. We got to start looking at the people that we're taking care of Mm -hmm. and yourself too. That's, I didn't even realize the uh, ear protection because those things are noisy. They're really noisy. And you're there all day. You know, you're taking care of people. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I've been practicing what, 15 years and I'm at the point where maybe more. Let's not do math. We won't make me any older than I need to be. Um, We'll say we're experienced, but like to the point now where I I feel like my, my mom, where I'm like, the kids are talking to me in the house. I'm like, you need to be in the room facing me so I can hear you. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like I can't hear. Mm -hmm. It's my fault. Wow. But I didn't know. But now we know. Now we know. And so now we can change. Um, I was going to say, what, what do you consider your practice now? Would it be something around biological dentistry? Would, would that be considered that? It is considered biological dentistry or is? holistic dentistry. Okay. Um, I think I could be wrong here. I think the term biological dentistry kind of evolved because holistic got a really bad rap as being just kind of quackery. Spread around everything. It is in every practice that's biological, even every dental practice, right? It's, it's an amalgamation of what the provider knows and believes and provides and what they're trying to do for their patients. And so for me, biological dentistry is a journey just like anything else. Um, I think biological dentistry speaks more to the holistic in terms of we're all trained very similarly as a general dentist. Biological, we're learning more, constantly learning and what's measured matters. So when I see a patient in my practice, we're looking from the outside in and the inside out. And so that's holistic, but also we look microscopically and macroscopically. So we're looking at what bugs actually live in the mouth and treating based on that versus the next level where you see the symptoms in the mouth, right? I want to look more at what are the causes? What is contributing to what we see today? And if we view decay and periodontal disease and oral disease as a symptom as opposed to the disease, things start to look different. Like clues. Exactly. See. Which I love clues and puzzles. So yeah. It's perfect. Okay. So we're doing it different. We're looking we're at this whole perspective. Could you maybe categorize some strong suits of your practice? Like, for example, you talked about metals. And um, let's talk about like your main you know, strategies if I were a new client, per okay. se. How are we going to work with it? Let's walk through in the light of metals or just the... Let's walk through like your general um, steps process? that we can take. Perfect. Okay, so new patient, before they even come into the office, they're filling out a fairly exhaustive um, set of forms. Okay. And that goes back to the, if you ask the right questions, you get the answers you want to see. Every single question on my medical and dental history questionnaire has a reason behind it. Interesting. And my software actually will pull those reasons out. So if someone says yes to a uh, fear and scale of zero to 10, there's actually a little thing that pops up. That fear. Says high fear. We wow. look at all, again, right? Mind, body, smile, yeah. the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So if they have a high index of fear, how is that going to impact how we're going to treat this patient? Very differently wow. from someone who's not fearful. But I'd like to know that when they come in, before they come in. I want to know these things so that I can cater what we do for them and how we do it to them personally. So once they walk in the door. Um, Sorry, what are some other questions you got? <laughs> you said fear there's is the fear. first one. Fear is the first one. So there's a, <laughs> there's a mental component. You know, have you had bad experiences in the past? Are you yeah. dissatisfied with prior dental work? 
Because again, that gives us history. Yeah. How do they end up in my chair? What am I going to do to treat them differently to allow them to move forward on their journey? What are the remaining concerns with their mouth? Um, from a medical standpoint, it's it's pretty exhaustive and it's a quick you know checklist of anything from how do you sleep at night or you're a restless sleeper to have you been diagnosed with sleep apnea to um, you know what's your A1C level if you're 100%. diabetic or pre-diabetic stuff that historically patients are like why why do you need to know that you're the yeah. dentist oh, right yeah. you're not a doctor you're a dentist one like, doctor at a time right one doctor at a time I love that uh -huh. yeah terrible but I love that phrase because that's it <laughs> right it they're just like well you're not my this doctor I'm like but it's connected stay in your lane come on yes I yeah. know I'm not very good at staying <laughs> no you're not no. I'm I'm like, right. let me just play in the whole I'm a real pool. estate me alone. <laughs> yes exactly equal opportunity wherever it lands mm -hmm. so um uh buh, 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 buh. so medical questions just run the gamut from start to finish yeah. um dental questions we are looking at kind of the four food groups that I'm looking at, maybe five. So your foundation, which is gum and bone support. Do your gums bleed? Have your teeth ever gotten loose before on their own or otherwise? Do you avoid eating certain foods? We're looking at jaw health now, looking at function. Wow. If so, why are you avoiding eating these certain foods? Have you had cavities in the last three years? We're looking at stability. Any history of gum disease in the family? Back to the gum stuff. This isn't a better order than I'm giving it to you, That's of course. Okay, yeah. um, Let's see, any concerns with like missing teeth, any concerns with jaw pain? Um, aesthetically, are you happy with your smile? Yeah. Is there anything you would do to improve your smile? Um, and a lot of these questions are kind of devised in a way that allow patients to kind of really process it differently. Right. And they, the system that I use, which aligns with the teaching that I, or the learning that I did, um, actually has like images and things as well so that you can better understand what the question's asking. And so the best patients really take time with those questions to answer them because that means that I can help them more. So awesome. um, when they're in the office, we're gathering all the information further. So we take so those questions. We take those questions, yeah. then we're layering in um, nutritional history. So we're awesome. asking, you know, how much water do you drink per day? Really, really important. Hydration is super critical and it's yeah. water, right? Not not bubbly things, not other things that are water, not Gatorade, but then also <laughs> what else are you drinking in your diet? And what Ooh. does that look like? So pretty exhaustive nutritional history as much as we can gather without overwhelming, um, even like meal frequency. And if you're following any particular regimen, do you have any sensitivities to foods? Um, do you avoid certain things? And then um, home care wise, what do you do to care for your mouth? Mm -hmm. Looking at those pieces of information um, when we're done with all of that, we're taking actual photos of the mouth okay. so we can see what we see in living color and it's great for communication afterwards. Yeah. Um, we take x-rays, x-rays, like it or not, we got to take x-rays. Yeah. I do not have x-ray vision, which I did. thing with the, you know, you got to clamp on uh -huh. it and stuff. Yep. Yes. Um, so we try to get the, through those pretty quickly. We now, yeah. as of this past week, we got a cone beam, which yes, is tell a me three dimensional this. scan. It's so exciting. Wow, wow. Um, so cone beam. cone beam. Okay. So we are looking at slices of the jaw, kind of from like just above the nose, okay. base of the nose, to like the epiglottis level. See. So trying to stay in my lane. Yeah. <laughs> Not piss off the ENTs. Um, <laughs> but we're able to look at and look for pathology in a different way, right? Because if we can see three-dimensionally, I can now see if there's a tooth or a tooth we didn't even realize, is there an abscess or infection around a tooth? Is there a cavitation or something in the bone that hasn't healed that maybe is contributing to someone's overall sense of malaise or discomfort or just not feeling right? Um, how big is their airway when they're upright and conscious? Very See. different from when they're not upright and conscious, but it gives us a screening tool for that. Okay. We can look at the sinuses. We can see like layers of like mucus in the base of the sinuses. We can see basic nasal anatomy. Can you breathe through your nose? Well, here's probably why you can't. Oh, oh wow. Things like that. It's the whole um, So it's a whole thing, yeah. um, which is really cool. And you can even see um, decay sometimes. It's not the same as a bite wing x-ray, but we could see there was a patient I saw and we scanned her and then I was doing restorative work on her. 
And we could see this area that I wasn't able to identify in the x-ray. And sure enough, I got in there and I, that was the deepest spot of decay in the tooth. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've been walking around with a blindfold on because right. I couldn't see all this stuff. Yeah. So um, that's been a really cool introduction to the practice just that's awesome. recently. Yeah. Um, thank you. Also, we'll do a Saf and a Pano kind of mode so we can see just different ways we can look at the mouth. and um, All angles. All wow. angles. Yes. That's awesome. And then, um, and it's quick and low radiation. It's like 10 seconds. Super that's good. Easy. Um, Worried about the radiation too. That's great. So you're looking at, you're really, we're you're trying. approaching everything we're trying. with the utmost care. Yes. That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely um, awesome. The other fun thing we do is we uh, take a biofilm swab of the mouth. Okay. And so that's basically. What's biofilm? So it's, it's a mix of bacteria and yeah. any kind of microbes and things that are in the mouth. So any kind of moist surface is going to immediately collect stuff and that stuff is biofilm in mm. the mouth we think of it as plaque or calculus if it's hardened so a plaque sample kind of works too but plaque is just so it doesn't seem like Bleh. yeah so biofilm so we'll go just like beneath the tooth surface and just grab a little sample and put it on a slide with a medium on it and then we pop it under the microscope and we right. can see what's like swimming around in there oh so you're looking at things so we're looking at uh, wow. yeah it's Eye opening. So right. we just introduced that, uh, I'd say like three or four months ago. And it's, I mean, I see patients who typically, you know, I'd be like, oh, you got a little bit of bleeding. You got a little, you know, do a little better with your brushing and flossing, right? And we'll, we'll see you next time. And we'll probably tell you the same thing. Swab them. And they have like this whole ecosystem of pathogens just swimming around. I would never have thought had I not seen that. And so what we see in the microscope predates what we see in the mouth, right? So we're seeing this development sometimes of a disease process that's going to take time before we actually necessarily see it become an issue because things have to reach a certain tipping point. And so we can see that in the microscope before it ever gets to the mouth. So like a pregnant patient, I would not have taken x-rays on or looked at any of that stuff. And I was just like, I'll just see you in three months. We'll do a shorter recare. Had a mouthful of spirochetes. And spirochetes are very high-risk pathogens. They're really hard to get rid of. They love an anaerobic, non-oxygenated environment. Mouthful of that. She's carrying a baby. If you have enough of that, the mouth, just like a leaky gut, a leaky brain, you can have leaky mouth too. Oh, wow. The little membranes, everything opens up, and all of those micro bugs go into the bloodstream and now they're going into your brain, into your heart, into so your So it's not endotoxemia. Baby. What toxemia is this? Alpha I want to say it's still endotoxemia, still endotoxemia, but just oral okay. and it's going to the rest of the body. Wow. So when we see stuff in the microscope, the next step is, Hey, let's grab it. Let's test this. Cause I can't yeah. tell you what species are there or how much. I just know this doesn't look good. Right. And so this isn't the classic, you know, this put is the not mirror the classic, in the mouth right, thing. <laughs> right. Not at all. And so for those patients, we'll do a salivary test that gets okay. sent to a lab in Austin. It's a real, it's like 99 bucks, super easy, spit in a test tube. Hardest yeah. part is getting enough saliva for some people, which is a problem too. That's diagnostic right there. Okay. And keep trying to get it into the little tube can sometimes be challenging, but yeah. um, the results are eye opening too, because that changes how we test things because we're looking at or treat things because we can see anything from early disease to, hey, this looks like, depending on the pattern of bacteria, like this is an airway issue. This is a nitric oxide issue. This is a resistant strain superbug issue. And I've seen a lot of those. Um, resistant strain. Resistant strain. So you can have. What are they resistant to? Typical treatment. So instead of a lot of times we use oxides and different things to kill off because most of these microbes don't like oxygen. Well, if they get to a certain level and they band together with other microbes, now they're like, oxygen's great. They can survive in an environment of up to like 23% oxygen. So if we're sending a patient home with, you know, ozone, ozone oil and stuff that typically is going to kill stuff off, now it's like, wait a second. They like that. Oh, they love the super oxygen. Right. Issue. So what are we going to do with them? So that's been a whole other conversation. I could right. talk for hours on that. <laughs> but point being, it's just, it's another piece of the puzzle that's helping us to kind of see where are you now? How did you get here? Okay. And what are we going to do about it? So um, microscope, comb beam. So 
questions. Normal exam, normal exam is the next piece. Lots of measurements. Finally, the normal part. Right, the actual, like, let's look at your teeth <laughs> and see what's going on. That's kind of the lag measure, though, right? If we're looking at your teeth now, we're just seeing what's what's actually there. But that's important. Um, so an actual exam of looking at tooth structure, looking at supporting structure, looking at um, wear and tear on the teeth. What does the wear pattern look like if you have wear? Is that something that's active or did it happen in the past? Okay. Is it, do we have things along the gum line? Um, lots of different pieces of that evaluation yeah. as well. An airway screening um, is another piece of that. Looking at structurally what's going on. Looking at the tongue. Oh. Mm -hmm. The tongue. It's a Everything. big important muscle that everything seems to revolve around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, are there restrictions there? Is your mouth big enough to actually fit your tongue? Do you have a chubby tongue? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Um, different things with that. Uh -huh. And then if that's most of it. Um, at the end of that, we'll talk briefly about what I see, if there, especially if there's anything that's like eminently going to be a problem, mm -hmm. but otherwise we'll get the patient back in one to two weeks and actually sit down and talk about our findings because mm -hmm. there's a lot to talk about and the visit's pretty exhaustive and yeah. I don't want to talk anymore <laughs> right. and the patient's kind of done. So, yeah. um, it's a pretty comprehensive process and wow. it is evolving as we speak because mm -hmm. I'm always working and learning new things and trying to make it better yeah. for the next person. Um, mm. And so, wow. Yeah. Full spectrum approach. Yes. I can't do it in 30 minutes with just a hygienist. No, you can't. And I cannot fit a cleaning in there most times. And how, how long has it taken? Though? Like an hour and a half. This whole process. Yeah. Hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. So we got the questions of testing and all this. And now we got the results. The way of results. Okay. So I would say, let's break it down to what are these big, these big problems that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And the low-hanging fruit that we can incorporate, as well as um, address, address, yeah. and practices. So um, the way I we talk discovery is that second visit. We're looking at structure, foundation. So like bone and gum. First, we're looking at tooth structure and weakening weakening of tooth structure. We're looking at jaw joint and airway. And then we're looking at aesthetics. And those are kind of the, the big picture of what we see in terms of findings. Mm -hmm. And so with bone support, gum health, the bugs are <laughs> a big deal. Yeah. Much more yeah. than I ever realized. Um, and so I really, I mean, I feel like the salivary test is something everybody should do annually. Okay. Just to see what's going on. Um, because I'm seeing so many like early, especially in the younger population, you know, you're like, like 20s, 30s, pretty healthy. What I see in there, a lot of times it's, hey, let's get you in some oral probiotics, which are different from gut probiotics. Even though we're in the same tube, there's certain bacteria that flourish in the mouth and will do well to take over the bad bacteria that's trying to grow. So if we can trot out the negative ones with the good ones, that's great. And if we can do that, I mean, that's the most cost-effective way we can start changing the, the oral microbiome. Okay. Doesn't oral exist. microbiome. Mm -hmm. Pause. Pause. Say that again. Yes. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So the oral microbiome is a whole different environment than the gut environment, even though they're connected. Okay. And so wow. we have different bacteria, different species that live in there, but we still will see yeast. We will still see some interplay between them. Yeah. But they're different environments, right? right. The gut's much more acidic. The mouth should not be as acidic. We want to have certain bacteria in there because they're responsible for important functions like creating nitric oxide, which I know you know a lot about, <laughs> possibly more than I do at this point. It's on my journey here. Okay, great. But, um, you know, we want a good, healthy microbiome. And yes. so that right there is something that I think is low-hanging fruit. I know there's lots of talk about mouthwashes and not using them and what you should do and how you should care for things. Um, I feel like it depends on what you're, what's going on in your mouth as to like what you're using to care for your mouth. If everything is stable and healthy, you can do a lot of things, right. almost anything to yeah. maintain that stability versus someone who's struggling to find balance with the alkalinity of their mouths, who's struggling yeah. to have the right bugs and bacteria populate their right. mouths, that kind of thing. And so there are some mouth rinses, for example, that I will use in a therapeutic capacity I don't use fluoride in my practice. I don't recommend it. Um, but there are some mouth washes that will take out a lot of the microbiome for a little bit with the understanding we're going to repopulate this with the good stuff. First thing. Yep. 
We're talking about this mild microbiome. How yep. does it get out of whack? I think it's the same way the gut microbiome gets out of whack a lot of times. Okay. Um, what we're eating and drinking and our habits and what we're using. If you are a Listerine, Colgate Total, you know, conventional, I'm going to mouth rinse two, three times a day because my breath smells bad. Yeah. Like you are wiping out your microbiome on a repetitive basis and then you're eating processed food fast food, sugar, seed oils, sugar, yeah. all the things. Well, who's going to come live in your mouth? Those who want to eat the things. Right. You then are breathing through your mouth. You have sleep apnea or you snore. And sleep apnea is when you're... When you stop breathing. Stop breathing at night. Wow. At night. Um, or you're on your way to sleep apnea because there's a lot of stuff that precedes actually that stoppage of breathing. So that can absolutely turn things on its head. Okay. The other thing that can, and this is a weird one, I'm still kind of working through the details, but all of this stuff is kind of a, it's transmissible. So if you have a partner who has lots of bad funky bugs in their mouths, mm -hmm. and then your system is maybe not as strong in terms Ooh. of an immune system, yeah, you're gonna swap spit, right? And Swapping tongues out here. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? <laughs> Stuff happens. Fucking you're going to, you're going to grow their bugs. Skekalakis, strepalakis party, right? <laughs> yes. You're the doctor. <laughs> yes. Well, and it's interesting because I've seen it with patients where, yeah. you know, we're do we're right on track and then we like swab their mouths and I'm like, intruder alert. What, oh, <laughs> what is this? Yeah. And they're, you know, they'll have like their spouse is like sitting in the reception area. I'm like, Hey, Come here. The one who didn't get it. Right? I was like, who's patient one? Yeah. <laughs> like, who did this to uh -huh. you? But, you know, we can do everything we can. But then if you're swapping spit and you're constantly ino being inoculated by someone else's crud. Yeah. Um, is he like, <laughs> There's a lot in our spin. audience is entertained. All right. Um, so if that's happening, like, you're kind of, it's quicksand. Like, okay. you can't ever quite get to healthy because you're constantly getting this other stuff right. back into your system. Because this, this microbiome, this diversity in our The mouth, diversity, exactly. It matters. Now, what's cool is if you are then taking probiotics and doing all the right things, and this is happening, yeah. depending on the strength of that system, yeah, you can fight it off. It's just how much, how much can you do? Just so, like our immune system. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, because it's still... So if we have a weak immune system, you know, we go out, we can get sick much easier. Yep. And that sickness is just not limited to the rest of your body. Your mouth is part of that body. Wow. Okay. And so when you have people who have um, insulin resistance, right? Yeah. Pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. All that leaky gut right. is leaky mouth. Your body's not oh, able to yeah. heal or fight stuff the way it should. That's why I heard uh, this one biological dentist, leaky gut, leaky mouth, leaky brain. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, what is he talking about? It's all of it. You know? Yeah. Um, you said, so we got to this mouth microbiome then you said fluoride and that's mm -hmm. that's a big thing that's in dentists that's ev is everywhere right and mm -hmm. um why do you not use fluoride it is uh considered a neurotoxin neurotoxin and so the argument against that is well we don't put enough in the mouth right for it to be considered a neurotoxin it prevents cavities right yeah um <laughs> there's other ways we can do it okay so yeah. number one right yeah. so um, hydroxyapatite is a great option Okay, that has, it's a building block of our teeth and our bones mm -hmm. and it can help remineralize teeth very well. So it's a step, let's take a step back. Mm -hmm. What even is fluoride really? And why did we start using it in our water? And yeah, and you're right there. People say, oh, we hear it's bad, mm -hmm. it's, but it's still everywhere. And they say, oh, you just need a little amount. And you're going to be good. Except that a little bit over time everywhere. Yeah. Right. It's like corn. Like corn, okay. It's everywhere. Um, so the reason that it was, it was found to help bind with enamel to prevent yeah. decay, strengthen teeth, rebuild teeth. I see. Um, the idea, I think the dental lobby is what started pushing fluoride into the water. And it was not for bad reasons, right? Like right. we were like, oh, we see that if this helps, this prevents decay, we can, we can help. Yeah. Huge populations who otherwise would not have access to care. Yeah, sounds good. Um, sounds great, but it doesn't restrict itself to teeth. So if you listen to Dr. Steve Lynn, he's an ENT up in Chicago. Okay. Um, they talk about Long how time. it causes premature calcification of cartilaginous structures. Ossicles in the ear, for example, can impact growth and development. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's just, there's a whole I've heard things about different. IQ even. Right. There's so many different side effects. That's the neurotoxin. Of fluoride. Okay. Of fluoride that there's so many risks. So if there's a better way to do it that doesn't have the same risks, why would we not, number one? Okay. Number two, it's still a Band-Aid, right? We're still putting something on our teeth that's not the be-all and end-all because people who use fluoridated te- toothpaste still get cavities. So that's not fixing it. They still get cavities. They're still getting cavities. It's not like if you painted your teeth every night, you would be completely immune to decay, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's look at the cause. Let's look at the diet. Let's look at the gut. The fear. The breathing. Yeah. Absolutely, because okay. those are the things that are going to impact in a better manner yeah. what we see in the mouth. Mm. For these larger populations who don't have access, fantastic. But what are they eating and drinking? Interesting. We need to educate. We need to get them off of the refined, processed yeah. foods, juice that's considered a fruit, Ooh. according to federal Fiber. standards. Like a sugar and water. <laughs> Why are we bathing our children's teeth in juice to meet a standard when it's not real or canned fruit? Fruit. Even what's more sad is the baby formula nowadays. I mean, you're seeing it. It's corn everywhere. Yes. See toxin seed oils, neurotoxic. Everything that we don't need. Everything we don't need. And it and, costs a lot. Yeah. Uh, when you, you're talking about food and stuff, food and stuff. <laughs> Weston A. Price. Mm-hmm. Love him. Mm-hmm. You do. I, I do. mean, that, that research was really incredible. It's fascinating. Because, I mean, when you go out to you know, indigenous tribes in Africa and the middle of the Sahara. and Perfect teeth. Perfect teeth and perfect jaw structures. and But it, they don't have dentists. But they don't have as... They don't have fluoride. You think they floss? No. <laughs> but, but they eat real food. Right, okay. Right? And so, they, wow. they have sunshine. Yeah. They get normal sun exposure. They're getting that vitamin D. Sunshine on the teeth, antimicrobial? Do you ever look into that? I've always no. wondered. So like... You know, like smiling at the sun. Because some people say, uh, big sun enthusiasts, which is great, suns is everything. Some people say, oh, it's good for the gut when you put your stomach out. I wonder. Maybe it's something to look into. I mean, there's your sun salutation modified, right? Yeah. Uh huh. I feel like at least energetically, you're getting something good. Yeah. And I think that's something that we overlook in dentistry, right? Is like Mm. the energy and all of that. Yeah. Because that affects your body's ability to heal Mm -hmm. and your susceptibility to disease. Right. And it's all coming together now. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. Okay. Microbiome, fluoride. A lot of super tricky, a lot of, it started good. We had a good intention by doing it, but now we're learning more and more and it's, it's getting into our brain and it's, it's causing problems mm-hmm. and the food's coming up play. You said cavities. Are you seeing more cavities now that we have these fancy toothpaste or less? What are you seeing? I mean, I haven't really seen a major shift. Yeah. Um, I think every, there's still lots of mouthfuls of cavities and decay in people who lead healthy lifestyles. Yeah. Um, And that's where a lot of conventional dentists will kind of poo-poo the idea of fluoride-free living because they'll see their their patients come in who don't do fluoride and they have mouth full of decay. And they're like, see, obviously this is what's happened. And the reality is probably not that, right? It's okay, well, what other things are they doing or not doing that may be contributing to caries risk or decay risk? Okay. Um, And so many of these people not to generalize, but patients, um, they're doing their best to do everything they can. But a lot of them have these breathing, sleeping issues, which I think is a huge piece of the puzzle that we just- Cavities. Cavities. Interesting. Because if you are, here's our our rabbit hole, by the way. (laughs) So if we're breathing through the mouth, right? Okay. A lot of different things change. Yeah. Our gut health changes, our microbiome changes. It's a stress response, it's right? It's a stress response. We are putting ourselves into more of a sympathetic overdrive situation. We are not sleeping well. We have fragmentation of sleep. Yes. We won't talk chicken or egg right now because again, deeper rabbit hole, but You're right. um, the pH balance of our mouth changes dramatically. We're drying out our mouths, right? So the saliva whose role is to protect is now kind of turning on us mm. because it's drier. It's more acidic. We can't keep the mouth free of, of decay especially in children. Um, a lot of these kids who are mouth breathers, their tongues are restricted or mm-hmm. tied. Everyone's got a restriction of some sort in their tongue. That's how it's attached, but it's a massive muscle. And if that tongue is unable to rest in the roof of the mouth, if it's unable to cleanse the teeth, 
when you're chewing or after you're chewing, not when, um, if it can't perform its normal functions or it doesn't swallow right, you've got a tongue thrust where it moves forward as opposed to lifting up and sealing in the palate, you're creating a vacuum of acid. These kids have reflux. So not only are they- Kids have acid reflux. So many. Jeez. So many. And so many of them, you know, they're picky eaters, right? They don't, they won't eat these things. Well, they're picky eaters because they're trying to protect their airway. They can't chew and swallow and digest their food properly. So they're not going to eat the foods that are going to make them choke. Oh, wow. They make the, they're, That's they can't taste the foods normally because their taste buds aren't able to taste normally because their tongue is restricted. Why is it restricted in the first place? Oof. <laughs> Kate, Sh Kate Shanahan's work. Do you know Dr. Kate Shanahan? I Catherine Shanahan. Uh, she made an amazing book. Why am I forgetting? True Foods or Healing Foods. Ooh, no. She's talking about epigenetics and basically yep. the evolution of your genes uh, transferring from mother to mm -hmm. child. And, you know, the more the mother is nutritionally depleted, mm -hmm. the child, you start seeing the abnorm uh, abnormalities come yeah. out in the child, the deformed facial structures mm -hmm. and maybe the eyes and, mm -hmm. you know, from vitamin deficiency or mineral yeah. deficiency. Yeah, so, or air. Air. But also oxygen people... Oxygen specifically. Oxygen, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. People are... Uh, with the tongue, like we can, we can start to fix this, right? We can. Interesting. Um, and then some let's of keep the on going with cavities, like, though. Oh yeah, cavities. more cavities. Focus. Uh, so we're doing like okay, people are trying to be healthy. <laughs> yep. You know, we're doing our fluoride toothpaste now. We now know that's a bit risky. Not ideal. Not ideal. We're we still think we're eating healthy though. Why are some people still getting cavities? Maybe a good amount. So it's the airway piece. To the me, airway piece. A lot, a lot yeah. of it okay. is. So um, making the acidic environment. The acidic environment. Your mouth has become the filter as opposed to your nose. Mm. Um, nose was designed for that. The nose was designed to mouth. filter, heat, hydrate, yeah. and and take in that oxygen, process it nicely for us, and create mm. nitric oxide. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a huge driver um, of of decay in children, especially is that and it goes into you know because they can't choose to eat the foods that they want to eat or they can't cleanse properly like we have more buildup of foods that are not ideal that they're consuming to begin with the processed right. foods all of right. that and they can't clean it properly I see. and so you know you'll see adults saying kids who have like a ton of plaque buildup and it's like gosh are you brushing yeah well they are but the toothbrush isn't in your mouth 24 7 your tongue is. Yeah. Your tongue serves a pretty major function in helping cleanse the mouth that we just kind of ignore sometimes. Um, and it serves a major function in our dietary choices because if we can't do those things, then we often don't tolerate the foods that are better for us. It's harder to chew. And then like, it's harder to chew foods and we've got these processed food diets, right? So all of this, these refined carbs, the acids, the sugars, all of that is making this perfect storm that is just a feeding ground for bacteria, which continues to perpetuate the disease. They create acids. We can't neutralize the acid. We get cavities. People must think you're crazy. Yep. I mean, they must. I mean, this this is like, this if is mind people, blowing. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll come to you after. But they'll come see me, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But it's just that and that open mouth posture. If you just, if you start looking at people and looking at kids and they're walking around and they look like little zombies with their mouths hanging open and yeah. you're just like, gosh, and they look so tired and you see okay. shadows under their eyes and they just, yeah. and then, and then you like <laughs> turn and look at the parent and you're like, oh, okay. Apple doesn't fall far from yeah. the tree. Right. It's unfortunate. And so all of that, and you start asking questions of these parents who bring the kids in to like, look at their airways and, and they're sleeping. I see a lot of kids where we have sleep issues and ADHD and all of that stuff. And we start asking questions and it's like, mom's like, oh. Why is sleep in bed? Why is the TV on at 9 p.m.? <laughs> well, there's also that, right? Because you're trying to do something. Yeah. So sleep hygiene is a big piece. But how do we get to the point where the TV's on? Because that's the only thing that could get you to sleep. And that oh, becomes wow. a vicious cycle too. Wow. But yeah, I mean, I'm a big advocate of like TVs do not belong in the bedroom. There's like two things that should happen in the bedroom. Neither of those are TV. All right, all right. <laughs> um, and sleep and yoga. Yes, yes, <laughs> yoga of all sorts uh -huh. or two person. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the the TV is a big piece, yeah. and for kids, screens thirty minutes before bed or just period. But, right. You know, good luck with that. Two uh, hours. It's man. a struggle. It right. is a struggle. You're, if you have a seven year old boy, you will know. Okay. <laughs> um, 
but you know, you've got to have that window before bed. And I think just establishing just a really good, uh, nighttime routine, Mm -hmm. or if you want to call it a ritual, whatever, that's like a wind down routine that does not include screens. Mm -hmm. Maybe that includes your, your dental home care regimen, um, things that you can use to calm down. Yeah. Maybe lip taping, which I know is a big thing you. for you. I just got some good ones. It sounds hostage like tape. Got to put you on non toxic. It, it's you can put on moisturizer and then immediately put it on after. And it stays on. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that sounds like yeah. fun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you look so, like a hostage though. Uh, which is good or bad? Strip. It depends, right? Because right. <laughs> we talked about this. Um, just like the the idea and the risks of like lip taping and like when it's appropriate, when it's not. Ooh. Okay. Um, Let's get into, yeah. Um, we totally Shit. just. Jeez. This is a trip. Cavities are still on it. We're still on cavities. It's all connected. The nasal. The, the, <laughs> we got the mouth. We got the breathing. We got the mouth, the nasal breathing. What else? Uh, bu- 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 Big thing with cavities. Diet. Diet's huge. Diet's very huge. Um, you know, we love our like fermented foods, right? Are great yeah. for K2. Um, kombucha's lovely, but in small doses, anything that's super acidic, we love. Lots of people are like super into all of the sodas, right? Like, the bubblies. The bubblies and all that stuff. The vegan bubbly, right? Right. If you look at their pH, like just grab it. I, I ha- used to carry pH strips on me. They've, they're not in my summer bag. It's yeah. too small. <laughs> but, you know, just pop a strip in and take a look at the pH. Some of these things are pretty acidic. I mean, you want to be neutral. Um, and so we're like bathing our teeth constantly in stuff that we think that we're hydrating. Oh, wow. We're not. What about mineral water? Same thing. Oh, shit. Mineral water is really not ideal. I like it. I know. How how many bottles can I drink a day? (laughs) One? Oh, gosh. I mean, it depends on your resistance to disease, right? Okay. But Take my probiotics first, and then it's not that easy. Yeah, or like... Flush your mouth out with real water afterwards to kind of alkalize. I mean, I think there's workarounds, right? I think anytime we're super regimented about don't do these things, cut out all sugar, cut out all things, we're just setting ourselves up for failure. So you have to be reasonable and realistic. And I mean, I see so many patients who they're on this journey and they're like, well, I've done this and I've done this and I've done that and I can't do this and I can't do that. I'm like, you are driving yourself crazy. And that craziness is going to drive your disease faster than anything that you're taking out of your system, right? So like you have to be able to live your life. Cut the Coke out, cut the Dr. Pepper out, like cut the stuff out that is outrageously damaging. Damaging. Yeah. And maybe allow yourself a treat once in a while so you don't feel like you're punishing yourself. Okay, that's good. But at the end of the day, like we're human, we gotta live our lives. There's certainly things we can do. And honestly, if you cut that stuff out, and then you're eating like real whole foods, take a new sip of that Dr. Pepper and you're going to be like, <laughs> you want why did on? I, no why? Way. There's no way. Yeah. It's too There's sweet. No it's just something tastes, it's not right. Chemically so, just off. Yeah. So I think that's personally, I'm like, you have to be kind to yourself and that doesn't, you know, you can't punish yourself constantly for these choices you've made. You just yeah. have to kind of meet yourself where you are. I love that. Um, I absolutely love that. So cavities. Wow. I mean, there's a lot. A lot there's of a lot. Um, is there any other standout things if someone's doing, let's even say all that, mm-hmm. which is probably not true, but let's say someone's eating good, you know, what about flossing? Is that, is that related to flossing like, helps. like, you know, you hear of the cavity mm-hmm. on top of the tooth, right. I believe, but there's also cavities in between. In between. Mm-hmm. And how, how do those, is that, you know, how do those occur? Um, so traditional theory is because we don't floss and stuff gets stuck between the teeth, like underneath the contacts of the teeth, and then it breaks down and the bacteria eats it and the bacteria excretes and creates okay. acid, creates cavities. So food just being food stuck. gets stuck. Right. And I think that is a big piece of it for a lot of people okay. that can be, um, worsened with the habits that we have. So people who do drink a lot of sodas and acidic things will see a lot of decay between the teeth. So like things like Zevia stuff mm-hmm. oh, shit. or like Mountain Dew and drugs will get cavities along the gum line. It's Mountain Dew and drugs. Yes. Not necessarily <laughs> combined, but potentially. Um, so we get gum no. decay that way. Yeah. And, uh, um, Mountain Dew and drugs. Oh my yeah, gosh. You know, typically it's more meth than yeah. anything else. Oh, wow. Get us in trouble. <laughs> but, um, you know, we'll just go globally, you know, avoid what you can pick your poison. Right. Um, <laughs> what else? But I mean, flossing's great. Yeah. I, okay, let's yeah, let's handle that flossing piece right now. Yeah. 
But there are people who don't floss and they do fine. Does that mean that you shouldn't? Yeah. Not necessarily. I mean, I think, again, it depends on your risk level and what's working for you. I'm a huge fan of like the water pig or water flosser because I think it does a lot more for us at a microbiological level because we are flushing out and irrigating and hydrating all of the areas that we can't get to with our toothbrush or a piece of string. And so to me, that's much more effective. And you can do things like put xylitol powder um, in the little vestibule of the water pick or grapefruit seed oil extract in Mm. there. And that can help. Um, It just adds more antimicrobial without like like killing everything off. You like clove? Clove oil is good. good. Um, Oregano. There's a lot of interesting oils that you can use. You just have to really cleanse out the little nozzle afterwards because it can get blocked up and okay. and um the other thing is your nose is attached to your mouth My right nose is your nose is attached to your mouth so we never talk about nasal hygiene and especially here in north texas most people have allergies and sinus issues and all of that that'll generate yeast in your mouth so well just some similar risks to gut yeast right yeah but it also generates um more of that reflux, that acidic environment, um, and it prevents you from breathing through your nose. So keeping that nose clean is really key Ooh. to keeping your mouth clean and clear. So How do you do that? Um, I'm a big fan of the clear, like the X L E A R spray. Okay. It's saline, but it has xylitol in it and grapefruit seed oil Interesting. extract or grapefruit seed extract. I keep saying that wrong. Yeah. Um, so where a tri- traditional saline spray is just going to dehydrate. The xylitol and the grapefruit seed extract help hydrate so you don't, your throat doesn't feel dry afterwards. Right, right. You're not like, gosh, I have to keep drinking the water. Yeah. You should drink water anyway. But mm-hmm. um, it is fantastic for both cleaning and clearing your nose. So cleaning yeah. is get the crud out, right? So like with my kids before they shower, I'm like, we're going to do, spritz some stuff in there. Afterwards, to kind of keep it clear, um, I have them do this routine where you like, spritz in each nostril so you spritz and like sniff plug the other nostril sm- spritz and sniff plug your nose close your mouth hold your breath and tick tock your head back and forth as Ooh, long as interesting. you can to get that whole it's like the buteco yeah. thing right and then when you can't anymore you keep your mouth closed you're gonna exhale through your nose inhale and you're gonna repeat that wow. keep your mouth shut two three four times you don't have to keep spritzing you're just gonna do the tick tock nose thing yeah it's gonna help clear <laughs> Your, na- your nose so you can breathe through your nose. So part of wow. that like nighttime routine yeah. helps tremendously. I love this. And the thing with, you know, the air quality and everywhere, yeah. everywhere, especially, you know, Texas is a good space. All the plastics and phthalates and arsenic mm-hmm. that you breathe in regular day yeah. air. So I, you know, my house is loaded with air filters, but now we know we, we can use some of these like uh, nutraceuticals almost. Yes. And I, there's one guy named Dr. John Laurence, and he's got these crazy nasal sprays. He puts like the clove in oh, it, yeah. and the, you know him? Mm-mm. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, send you it. Have to because this stuff is yeah. this stuff is insane. And he he's a big proponent of the neti pot. Mm-hmm. You like him? I like it, but I like there to be more than just saline in it. Okay, so yeah, low nutrients. But I love the, the the idea behind it. Okay, yeah, cool. Absolutely. Let's keep it rolling. Right. I love this. We were, we went, we're going through the process of me being a new patient per se. We went through yeah. our questionnaire. We went through our x-rays, went through a whole 3d approach. And then we started getting into some problems, you know, you're, you're eating like shit. You can't breathe. Um, that's why you got a cavity here or, you know, can't sleep and mm-hmm. your tongue formation. Hmm. What else? What else? Um, what else are we seeing? That's huge. Maybe like a root canals and stuff like that, or what are some other yeah. problems and low hanging fruit? Um, yeah, so root canals, um, controversial. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so a lot of people have them. Root canal. So a root canal is basically Kurt just got a procedure. One. Kurt did. Kurt had one. Oh, Kurt did you not do it? No, I don't do root canals. Okay. Oh my god, you don't. They even do t- not bring joy to me. So they were. They have not been a part of my practice for longer than I've been biological 10 seconds what is what on even earth is a root canal so root canal is what is done if a tooth the nerve is dead or dying or irreversibly inflamed so you go in through the top of the tooth 
and we use little files to clean out the nervous and blood nerve like nerves blood vessels just all the structure that's inside the roots of each of the teeth wow or of that tooth rather and there can be there's typically multiple roots and multiple canals and then it's irrigated with a medical irrigation solution and then filled with um, something called gutta percha which comes from a tree but it's a medicated filling material that seals off the canals as best it can FDA approved mm-hmm Tits. Mm-hmm. And then they like build it up and, and typically a tooth that's had a root canal needs a crown because it's now dead and brittle and needs to be protected. I see. So that's the nutshell version. Um, the challenge with a root canal is you've got a dead mummified organ in your head and we try to make it as aseptic as possible, but you can't seal all those tubules off. And so there's opportunity for bacteria and crud to come in and out of those root tips uh, the tooth is fragile. It can break easily. Uh, lots of issues. And, you know, you can miss canals because they're teensy tiny. And and the teeth, so, sorry to cut you off, but yeah. the teeth breathe, right? Like yes. these teeth have a lymphatic yes. system of its own. So they're yep. carrying nutrients back and forth, and spreading yep. it out. Yep. So, okay, so this root canal, don't they put metals at the root canal? Or is, um, that, is that another thing? Yes and no. So a lot of doctors will put a post in, like a metal post or a fiber post to yeah. provide additional structure. I've done that hardly at all because I hated the procedure, number one. And yeah. number two, it just changes the mechanism of failure. When you put a post in there, it makes the tooth more rigid. Yeah. And so instead of it maybe breaking off at the gum line because it's mm. kind of going between the roots and the, the coronal of the tooth structure, yeah. it ends up splitting in half. So we end up with a vertical fracture potentially. Um, but big issues with the root canals can be reinfection or continued infection. And a lot of times we don't see that, right? But we have these patients who have symptoms, they have problems, they can't figure out what's going on. Um, energy flow, so teeth along the same meridian. So if we think about our body oh. as a energy superhighway, right? Yeah. They block the flow of energy. So right. each of these teeth are associated with different organs up and down this little highway, Mm -hmm. if energy can't flow through, then we can end up having some challenges in those organs up or downstream. Absolutely. So that's a really, really big concern. Um, And just that toxicity that can arise from having that stuff in your mouth. Speaking of toxicity, a lot of, there's a lot of um, old school dentistry. You know, Kurt was talking about me. He's like, man, I had fillings in my teeth, Mm -hmm. metal fillings. Why, what's up with metal fillings? And why are they causing these problems? You know, these up problems people never had. Right. And now they're like, oh my God, my brain's off. Yeah. What's um, what's going on? I mean, on a there? lot of people have sensitivities to metals. Okay. The mercury does leach out. Yeah. Um, even when you're, you know, if you drink a lot of hot, hot coffee, you, you chew ice or chew hard foods, you shouldn't chew ice, but mm. we know it happens. Yeah. Um, these things are constantly causing re- micro releases of mercury into your system. Some people can detox and they can. It gets excreted through their hair, through their skin. Other people can't. It goes into their organs and you get brain fog and issues with everything, right? There's so many different systems, uh, symptoms of mercury toxicity. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's a major issue with those metals. Teeth are not in as great shape with metals in them because the metals expand and contract. And so it breaks down teeth. Right. Um, And that brain fog, right? Oh my gosh. Metals, something really important here. Oh, they also attract parasites. The, Metals. The, the amalgam does. Oh, Interesting, shit. right? That yeah. was actually something I learned fairly recently from a holistic nurse um, practitioner that I know. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that makes sense. <laughs> Why wouldn't it? Uh-huh. So for people who have parasites, well, guess what? These amalgams are not helping them get better. Right. They're just attracting and helping. It's just a band-aid. Yeah, it's just a band-aid. So um, those are the big things that people get really sick from having them in their mouths and yeah. teeth. And also, I mean, most times when I take out one of those, there's decay and junk underneath them too. So the seal that they allegedly make either doesn't work well or we just never treated the tooth well to begin with. I see. You have this uh, smart mercury removal. Yes. What is it? So it's something that the IAOMT, which is the Nash, Nash, International Academy of Oral Medical Toxicology, probably butchered that, but A-plus. acronym that's, they're good for... 
they do all the biological dentistry stuff oh, and cool. look out for the health and well-being of, of patients and, and uh, providers. I love it. So they have a protocol basically that allows us to minimize exposure to mercury vapors and mercury particulates in the removal of these fillings because you get the greatest exposure during placement and removal. You get the tiny micro exposures throughout, but when you're removing, all this stuff is flying through the air in the mouth, right? It, everything you just talked about. Everything, wow. right. And okay. so you just get that like, thousandfold so we fully like drape the patient they've got an oxygen mask on with oxygen they've got a rubber dam or nitrile dam that's isolating the tooth from the rest of the mouth and then we use this hgx cream that can absorb extra like particulates on our gloves and the dam itself there's suction underneath we've got an extra oral vacuum charcoal slurry that's swallowed and excreted or expectorated spat out um those are the big things. It's a whole protocol. I've got like yeah. a, here's the picture of setup and we put it out every time because I'm like, don't forget any of the little bits and pieces. There's wow. just lots of detail that goes into it. Yeah. Oh, and then of course we're draped and gowned and wearing P100 masks. So think COVID protocol. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had it before and then filtration in the office. And Love so it. the goal is that we are minimizing exposure before, during, and after and trying to keep the patient as safe as possible. We definitely, like we typically do it either half the mouth or a quadrant at a time. You don't want to cross midline mm -hmm. um, for healing reasons. And um, the idea is basically that we want to get that stuff out of there, but then we do have to replace what's missing. So once we get everything out, we have to make it all go away. And then we clean everything up and we start preparing to restore the tooth and we can restore with, sometimes it's just a filling and we use like a, a bi mostly like a biocompatible filling. Oh yeah. Um, mm, that's a whole other thing too, right? I know. So <laughs> fillings, crowns, um, depending on how much tooth structure is remaining, a lot of those teeth end up needing to be protected with a crown because otherwise they'll break down. Right. Okay. So, yes. Let's get, let's let's do a couple more. We gotta. We're gonna wrap we it up. To... You gotta go soon. No, I'm good. Okay. But I know we've got. No, we're time. good on time. Cool. Cool. Are we good? Come on, sorry. Okay. Give us a thumbs up. Um, we're, this is we're making headway yeah. we're learning how this mouth is just everything it's the brain it's the body it's some meridians like you said yeah i am i'm a patient now and i'm, I'm getting everything like mm -hmm. got the root canal done the cavities or maybe not the root canal done oh maybe not right <laughs> we're not doing it at all we're gonna actually. we're gonna talk risks benefits and decide what's best for you and your body okay so we're okay. doing all this yeah. you do some other practices as well i was seeing on your instagram you incorporate ozone mm -hmm. into your clinic and frankly uh ozone i thought that was like the gas that is toxic right what right <laughs> you know high level we let's the layer right exactly the ozone <laughs> layer let what why do you use ozone in your practice I love ozone oh my gosh i need yeah. to learn so much more about it because it's, it's just wonderful. such an amazing um natural material right so it is antimicrobial antibacterial antifungal antiviral uh, it's a very unstable gas that neutralizes to oxygen. So we use it in a couple different forms. We'll use it in our water, um, especially when we're doing like therapy yeah. because it's constantly flooding the mouth as we go with an mm. antimicrobial material. Yeah. Um, and we use it in gas form in deeper pockets or inflamed tissues. I use it after extractions. I'll like kind of sit it in the socket and oh my gosh, the healing that you see with that I mean, I'll see a patient, I saw an 87 year old man, like a week after doing extractions on him. I didn't do any grafting or anything like that. It looked like that extraction was done like three months before. Wow. One week later. Yeah. And he was diabetic. And I'm like, so it's like the inflammation up. went down, right. Interesting. everything, the pain wasn't there. Yeah. Like it is phenomenal. Just the things that you can just do with the gas um yeah. and then we do have the ozone oil as well which in my house we use it as like it's our neosporin like yeah. a kid gets a scrape you get a sunburn mm -hmm. go get the oil i don't want go get the oil it doesn't hurt mom it smells kind of funny yeah it does no big deal um and it's actually drinking the water is really good too mm -hmm. um it's good so, for the gut as well. yeah yeah all the parasites amazing. in the gut Probably from the mouth or vice versa. Who knows? <sighs> All of it. <laughs> um, I do use because it's medical medical grade oxygen to to make our ozone. Um, oh, sweet. Which that's a hard thing because you can get stuff like on Amazon, 
but you really want an ozone tank, I mean, an oxygen tank with it. Otherwise you've got, I mean, our natural air isn't primarily oxygen, right? We've got all the other gases that go in there with it. So um, it is important that you have like a straight O2 source yeah. when you're making it. But um, I think it's just a tremendous way to, to detox. It's amazing. Um, I love it. Awesome. We got the, we oh, got it desensitizes these, too, by the way. Desensitizes. Mm -hmm. Oh, when people have incredibly sensitive teeth. Yeah, super sensitive teeth. Or like we have a deep cavity or, and we do. Which just hurts so bad. And it hurts. Um, it can remineralize too. So like if we have really deep decay and we get to the point where like all the bacteria is out, but there's still like this like layer of kind of leathery, soft yeah. tooth structure, a gas on it and it goes hard and it gets all frosty. And it's just the coolest, I mean, science experiment right there. So yes, I could spend hours learning more about ozone and I should, um, but even just what, with, with what we do now, it's, it's huge. And the fact that you're continuing the pursuit of learning and not perpetual, just perpetual, perpetual. <laughs> and not just saying, oh yeah, I'm a doctor. You don't question me. And right. I'll fill your tooth with mercury. Some shit. All right. <laughs> Who knows? Yes. But got this, these big procedures that we can do and mm -hmm. maybe they're not even so big, maybe, but they're just, you know, they're functional and they help the whole body. What? We did all this stuff. Our teeth are feeling amazing. How can we start to maintain our teeth? What are your, let's say, what are your, like, a uh, couple of your favorite things that we can things to do from toothbrush? Paste. Yeah. Water pick. We know that. Mm -hmm. Maybe some oil pulling. Maybe some oil pulling. What are you into? So, uh, my favorite toothbrush, I have two. I love the Sonicare. I Sonicare. do not. I don't love the Oral-B. I feel like every time I see someone whose gums I'm not happy with and they use an electric toothbrush, it's an Oral-B. And I don't know why. It's just, it's never been my favorite go-to brush okay. and I'm never happy with the results I see. <laughs> you have an Oral-B? <laughs> so what do you have? <laughs> so I love the Sonicare. Let me see that water and I also pick. really love, um, and this is new in our practice, I love the burst toothbrushes. Okay. They're like charcoal bristled and right. they have the same like tapered, like a Sonicare. Yeah. Um, but they're a lower price point and they're super cute. Cool. Um, so I love those. Those are my favorite brushes. My are those favorite electronic brushes. They're electronic. Okay. Um, cool. If you, my favorite like non-electronic brush um, is number one should be extra soft or soft bristles. Always, always, always. You're not okay. Hold on. Yep. A lot of people think scrub the shit out of the tooth and right. you know what's wrong with that. Would you polish your car with like a one of those like Jiffy pads or would you use like a a chamois Ooh. cloth? Right. Okay. So those hard bristle brushes are just creating micro, uh, like grooves Flash. in your teeth. You're, you're, yeah, you're scratching your teeth as opposed to polishing them. You want okay. to polish. I see. Um, less is more there. Yeah. And uh, I mean that's the big thing. Like don't don't abuse your teeth. They're, you want to keep them. You have that one set. So right. gentle polishing is is always better than scrubbing. Yeah. If there's something on there that needs to be scrubbed, you probably need to come in and see me. And we can use sound waves to make that go away right? holy cow using sound to he is electric stuff yeah shake stuff up um and we do guided biofilm therapy as well which is using powdered pressurized powder and water to make everything wow. go away and awesome. polish. yes um so favorite toothpaste i love risewell it's kind of my my number one go-to toothpaste um Boca has a great toothpaste as well it's a little bit more abrasive um, and I recently got on these, um, when I was in Portland, I went to like one of those no waste stores and that was a whole other experience. That was amazing. Um, but they had this little jar of like the little tablets and these ones are called, I think bite tabs. And they're the one that I found had no fluoride. It had hydroxyapatite. It had baking soda. It had xylitol. I want to say it might have had a powder of some sort in it. Arginine's great if you can find arginine Ooh, too. Um, helps with curious prevention and also helps with like sensitivity. Um, just learned about this this past week. So <laughs> very fresh knowledge on the arginine. Do you know, but, uh, do you know uh, Living Libations? Have you ever heard of that company? Apparently it's, I know nothing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this lady, more. Dr. Priya. Uh, oh, and she has my name too? Oh my God, it's amazing. Uh, she, I forgot her. She's this amazing company. And she's a biological dentist. Okay. And she has all of these, she's got makeup, these teeth things, and she uses ozonated oil, like mm -hmm. ozonated oil packets. Yep. She's got these water picks and right about the soft bristles. And yeah. I highly recommend it. It's oh, a bit more expensive because she really uh, takes into care know. of the essential oils. And 
all the good stuff. Yeah. So oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I'll have to look at that. I'll have to I'll listen back you. through. Yeah. Send yeah. me stuff. Show notes. Um, but yeah, so toothpaste wise, okay. I love, um, rise well, Boca and this, this tooth thing bite taps, I think is, I need to reach out to the company. Just mm-hmm. haven't gotten there. Um, and then there's a doctor, Shannon, is it Shannon? There's another one I'm looking at in terms yeah. of products. Um, Again, products matter to a degree, but not as much as we always think. Right. But they help. Um, and uh, Perio Sciences, which is a company out of Dallas or Richardson, they have a great line of natural products as well. And I like their toothpaste. Love it. Um, ozone oil, I also do love. Puro 3 is out of Arkansas. Ooh, Puro 3. And they do uh, tooth and gum oil, which yeah. is great. Mm-hmm. And a little bit goes a long way. It does go rancid, so you want to keep it in the fridge. Interesting. Don't breathe it in, right? Oh, you can. You can put well, it in your well, nose. We got to talk about breathing in the, uh, the, the ozone because I've heard it could right, be Right, that's where it'll irritate your lungs. So like when we use it in the mouth, we just have a high volume suction with it. Every so often, someone will get a little thing of it. Vitamin C okay. helps to calm it down, but it's 30 minutes of just like ugh, something's irritating my throat and goes yeah. away. Um, so I actually want to start doing, um, at least for me, I've got a sinus insufflation kit. So basically you can get it into your sinuses and clear out the, the I junk. It. I love it. Some people do use uh, ears. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And it's, you can do a doctor who's a conventional dentist up in like Idaho. He's been doing it for like 20, 30 years. And he's like, it's amazing. Um, but like three treatments of that for people who have chronic sinusitis, like every couple of weeks and it goes away. Like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. But because I'm me, I don't want to try it on someone else. I have to be my own guinea pig because I mean, if something happens to me, something happens to me. But yeah. The worst that would happen is I just get it into my lungs and it irritates mm. me. And that's the cool thing. It's like, there's really no major side effects unless you're doing something crazy. But the, vaping it. Wow. Well, right. <laughs> that's a vaping whole. Vaping and teas. Oh, shit. That's a whole other conversation, yeah. right? Mm. Any of that stuff, unfortunately, just does not bode well for our bodies. Right. Wish it did, but yeah. not yet. We <laughs> no. haven't found a way. No. So, okay. Um, yeah. So that's my story on toothpaste. Let's do oil point. It's the last. Yes. Oil pulling is fantastic. Gums look really great. It's a committed practice, but I do not recommend oil pulling if you have metals in your mouth because okay. it you're pulling the toxins out of the teeth, right? You're leaching all that stuff out. Well, you're also leaching out the mercury that's in those amalgams as well. So yes, you're going to pull it and spit it out, but it's in your mouth for 20 minutes first. So is it going back and forth into your system? I would yeah. think so. You're releasing a lot of that. And I don't think that's really safe. Right. Um, so if you want to develop that practice, fantastic, but I would do it after you get the metals out. Okay. Um, and there's some great, I mean, you can do coconut oil, you can do. Um, some companies have great ones. Yeah. Minozen, this guy puts oxytocin in it. He puts clove oh, in it. Oh, that's fine. Oh, it's amazing. Um, it I burns, love... it burns in a good way where it activates the vagus nerve. Okay. I was like, yeah, be I, careful I'm, with burning. I'm not going to say a chemical burn, but some, <laughs> yeah. sometimes the clove and, uh, yeah. what else does he put? It's like spicy. Uh, yeah, I'll send you it. And oh, you're going to really? be like, you might approve or not. I think you will. Yeah. I think I'm open-minded. I'm always yeah. like, let me, I'm not going to judge till I try or learn right. more. Yeah. Um, and that's the cool thing with patients too, right? Like they come up with all sorts of interesting things and I'm like, well, this is worth pursuing. And that's the problem is like the shiny, bright, shiny object thing, squirrel syndrome. Whoa. Um, yeah. It it's everything. The uh, Puro 3 has one too. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's I'm really great if you've that. got some other issues. I leave, I've got a whole stash in our fridge at the office. Yeah. So I always forget I have it because it's in the fridge. It's out of sight. And mm-hmm. like, patients will talk oil pulling. I'm like, oh, I have some. <laughs> if right. you want to try okay, it. Okay, let's talk, let's talk your yeah. clinic for a second. We can yeah. go and do all of this and what's your clinic called it's called the whole tooth nice nice right on yes. and you're in dallas i'm in dallas okay. in a cute little victorian house and not a very nice part of town really um but it's always been a dental practice like yeah. for 20 odd years um it's always been like a little boutique practice not always biological that was me um Interesting. but yeah so i've had it for five years and yeah five years june awesome and um just very boutique very i'm currently the only provider i may or may not have a hygienist on board in the nearest future we'll see okay but um you get a lot of time with me and my team yeah and um again we try to really serve just that whole person so we have i have a line of teas that we um 
I worked with a tea maker in Taos. And it's organic tea. So one is called Smile that's got ingredients that are good for your smile. It's green oh, tea. Oh, we get based. tea when we come to you. Yeah, oh, I get cool. tea. Nice. Um, and then I, thought, I thought, oh my God, I thought people said green tea was horrible for your teeth. No. Someone said it stained your teeth. Well, stain's Some not a disease. Random. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It has... Um, what about coffee? Also not, not bad for your teeth. Both okay. of them have ingredients that help prevent decay. Interesting. Um, coffee can be a little bit more acidic. Yeah. So there's the risk there. It's when you start adding all the stuff to it, right? You're like, you get your Starbucks with your syrups and your milk and your all of that. That's yeah. where we start to have challenges. But straight up black coffee is fine in and of itself. I wouldn't be drinking five, six cups a day. If you are, I'd be worried about the rest of the body. And I'd mm -hmm. also be worried about how you're sleeping at night. Why do you need so much? And you're going to address this. Mm -hmm. There's no running away. No. <laughs> no running away. <laughs> no, the I have the tooth. conversations and sometimes I forget, you yeah. know, because I'll see like patients or patients' husbands and all like, so how are you sleeping? Are you sleeping in the same bed? And I'm like, I mean this not on a personal level, but on a, as your doctor level, right? Yeah. Like this yeah. is why I want to know like any issues in the bedroom because again, that indicates we have some sort of airway breathing issue. Right. My husband snores so much. I can't even sleep with him anymore. Exactly. I mean, so many people sleep in separate beds. Yeah. There's all sorts of stuff that you, again, if you don't ask, you don't know. And people don't share. They don't share. They don't, they have their own filter, right? They're like, this is not relevant to my mouth. Everything is relevant to your mouth. Yes. <laughs> Just tell me. That's, that's the, that's the theme of this podcast. Everything is, related. everything is totally relevant. Nothing is off limits. Um, and that's, I mean, I recently started doing acupuncture, not providing, but like receiving. Oh, okay, cool. And, um, my doctor was like, I mean, just text me with random symptoms. They may not mean anything to you, but they probably mean something to me. Just as we're kind of going through the process of like, what would be best for you? Because um, she's also a doctor of Chinese medicine. She's awesome. Nice. You would you would enjoy speaking with yeah. her. Oh, yeah. Um, Plug me. Yeah. I just had a fertility uh, acupuncture expert on. Oh. Cool. Uh, I'm forgetting names. I Maybe it's Mercury. That. Yeah. Um, she was great, but... Yeah, so text your friend. Let's go. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. It's just, I mean, again, all of the, just the connections, the energetic, physical, all of it is just yeah. incredible. And you just don't realize how much so until you have that one person who, you know, does something and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. What? Where'd that come from? How, mm -hmm. how did that work? I mean, I see like A1C levels improve because we finally got their gum disease under control. I Amazing. see um, people get pregnant because again, gum disease, um, they're sleeping better. They like can see again. Yeah. I had a mom who has two kids, youngest one's eight. Yeah. And we got her into a sleep appliance. She didn't want to go through all of the other stuff that it would take to like holistically treat because she's a mom. She's got kids. She just wants something that's going to make her Keep going. And she's like, I'm so tempted to have a third child because I feel like the first two, their like entire childhood has been a blur to me because I couldn't, couldn't see. Yeah. Um, so like those things matter. Those are the, the warm fuzzies where you're like, Man, I really, I made a something. difference. Yeah. Right. That's beautiful. And that's outside of just making beautiful smiles, which is yeah. also something I do. It's just, no, that's a side effect. Not, it's a side effect. Yeah. Absolutely. And sometimes we rebuild, you know, we're working on a big case right now. It's yeah. 28 teeth and we're rebuilding the entire smile. Oh, wow. Wow, so, wow. wow. Like we do the fun stuff that yeah. looks glamorous and white and teeth and all that. But so all just, uh, we, we can go to you with yeah. all of our, patients. all the things. Okay. Yeah. Good. If I don't want to do it, I'll tell you. Awesome. All right. <laughs> I don't, I don't beat around the bush with that. I yeah. just want to do what I'm comfortable doing and believe in. That's great. Yeah. Um, last thing, what's, what's next? What are you really into? I'm trying to, <laughs> oh, I mean, gosh, that's the ultimate question, right? More right. with the cone beam now that it's my new toy yeah. um, and really learning how to maximize that in terms of what we see and can do with it. Probably jumping more into, um, I have like a laundry list of things we have to, we're trying to do like a quarterly thing. So this past quarter was really focused on the micro yeah. in the mouth and the salivary testing and stuff. Cone beam kind of falls more into like the airway breathing stuff. I'd love to start doing some PRF. So that's somewhere on the agenda. I'd love to do EAV testing. So that's on the agenda and I'd love to do some laser stuff, but those are also, those come with a sizable purchasing list as well. Oh yeah. Um, so really just diving more into what can I do biologically as a biological dentist. Nutrition is an obsession of mine that I also would really like to spend more time with. Okay. So yeah, that may be it. I love it. And we'll see. There's, there's always, 
multiple somethings. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, and I want to learn. Um, I want to learn Reiki. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Do the Haven people put you on? No. Um, Jessica, who is at my, my Renaissance front yeah. desk reception. Can't even speak anymore. Receptionist. Yeah. <laughs> She's a Reiki master. Oh, my God. So I just need to have some time and mental capacity to devote to it. Yeah. But I just, I love it because it's something that as dentists, we are always touching patients, right? So we are always receiving energy. That's and it's true. generally not good energy. It's a lot of fear, a lot of distrust and all that. And so I take that on and I take it home with me. Yeah. And so I would much rather be able to provide positive energy and to be able to use that to help calm and soothe patients as opposed to taking all of that wow. to myself. That's um, huge. So I'm excited for doing yes, please. that. We do do new calm right now, which is great. Oh, right I'm on. Like, oh, That's yes. why I, I'm like, you got yes. all the toys. I have toys, little yeah. toys here and there. Yeah. That's and the great. new calm's great. I pulled nitrous out of my office because I didn't like it. It's a Wait, pain. hold on. You had nitrous. I had it. Took it out. I hated it. Texas has a ton of regulations around it. You have to like pulse ox, blood pressure, yeah. listen to the lungs, all that stuff. People who have the MTHFR mutation yeah. do not react well to it. Interesting. And there's a lot of those walking around who don't know it. Yeah. Um, and I'm so short waisted that when you have all that stuff on, like I basically have to stand. Um, it just takes more time. And honestly, I haven't needed it. I haven't had to prescribe anti anxiety meds or any of that for five, six, seven years because wow. patients are able to stay calm. And then the, the new calm is great for that too. Because it uses just acoustic, neuroacoustic technology and um, the little cardiothoracic mm -hmm. yeah. um, spot. It's, it's like a band. Yeah. It's cool. Well, actually it's new. They're new is just a sticker. Oh, really? Yeah, um, it's a sticker. You don't confusing. take a pill or anything. There's no yeah. GABA pill. There used to be. Um, so it's a sticker eyes are covered and then you've got the headphones yes okay um and it's just it's so easy i thought it was a wristband or something. it used to have more to it okay. and they updated it so that there's less yes because the less we have on our person the less claustrophobia and stuff too so yeah it's a people don't realize how beneficial it is but like once they have that on they just kind of sit they're not like squirming and fidgeting and their tongue yeah. behaves yeah and so Ooh, it's a big, big you know it's a big thing it's even great just as like a little escape for 30 minutes like meditation so it's awesome. yeah yeah all, just, all the fun things we just want everybody to be happy and healthy and you know continue on their journey of, of life yeah this has been so wonderful yeah and we're gonna fun. we're gonna put all your information down perfect your clinic your priya gens, gens. Mm -hmm. you've got it let's go that's a good first guess <laughs> yes and thank you so much again thank you this um, was fun i'm I mean, so excited to be here you we really learned a lot today. From you. Yeah. So well, likewise, yeah. I have so many new things to pursue. Oh yes. Out. All the links, we'll put them on the show notes. Yes. You let me know you send them yeah, my way. For sure. Thanks again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for listening once again to the cool health podcast. I hope you found some meaning out of this episode. Share this with your friends, like, and subscribe for more. Thank you once again. Okay.